Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about engraving with your Cricut and fonts that are a great option for that. So if you've ever tried engraving with your Cricut, you might have gotten fonts that were just sort of lines. So they're more for drawing or for pen lines, but they work for engraving as well. However, they might be difficult to see on your surface. The fonts we're going to talk about today are all filled, hatched, there are other names for them, and they add a thicker look to your engraving, making it stand out more. So I'm going to show you several different options. However, I'm going to show you how to find these yourself. So whatever font website you prefer, you can search it for fonts that will work with Cricut engraving. So let's take a look at how to find those fonts that we'll be using to engrave. And we're going to do a sample sheet with some of the fonts that I found, including some fonts in Cricut Design Space that I found. So even if you don't want to search font websites, you're not comfortable with that, you're not comfortable adding fonts to your device, well, there are fonts right in Cricut Design Space that work with this method. So let's take a look at finding those fonts. So how do you go about finding fonts that are good for engraving? I am gonna start on the Creative Fabrica website, but this could be any website that has fonts. And you can search for a few different words and you might come up with some other words that work as well. So first of all, I'm going to do engrave, but leave the E or the ING off. So that way it'll get engrave and engraving. And I'm gonna do search. Then over here on the side, I'm gonna be sure to pick fonts. And we're looking for fonts that have some kind of fill line in them. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorites here in a minute that I've already added to my computer into Design Space. But this would be one example. Let's scroll down. This would be another example of if you just wanted the line. But remember, we're looking for the fonts that have several lines so they look more significant on our engraving. So it looks like the search term engraving is getting us a lot of single line things. So let's look at the word filled. Again, we'll pick fonts. Now I'm starting to get fonts like this one, on the waves, where it has this wave pattern throughout the letters. Now that one would definitely work, but I like ones that are more lines that are on the inside. This font, Chris Tree, would also be another fun one for Christmas where you would get the tree pattern and the dots within each letter with your engraving. This MTF Epic would be a really great one. So I would probably use the filled and outlined version of this where you can see the MTF here where it would have sort of a hatched pattern inside. So that's another word that we can search for. So we'll go up here and we'll search for hatch. Again, we're making sure fonts is picked and we can see some things are coming up. This deco hatched font looks really good. So you just wanna scroll through these, search for different words. Good words are engrave, filled, hatched, line font. Other fonts that work pretty well are fonts like this wintery where some of the lines are a double line, a lot of times that looks really good engraved. And then also when I find a font that I like on one of these websites, so this racket would probably look really good, I go ahead and click on it and open that page up. And a lot of times on this page, there will be similar fonts that are recommended fonts. So if I scroll down, I see that these fonts are recommended. Now, none of those really work for what I'm looking for, but that's how I found a lot of the fonts that I found was the recommended fonts at the bottom. Then finally, another great word to search is line. So this summer sports works good. This woody line is actually one of my favorites and I'm gonna be showing you how that looks in a minute. But as you can see, there's several different things you can search. This is another one I'll be showing you in a minute, this cosmology. So keep searching different words to find those filled fonts and clicking on each of those, seeing what the recommended fonts are on those pages. For instance, on this cosmology page, if I scroll down, this one right here, actually both of these top ones would probably work for an engraving font. So you can just scroll through one of these websites and find fonts you like. Now, if this is too much for you, there are fonts in Cricut Design Space, as well as some that I have handpicked. So let's head and look at those. So what I did was within Cricut Design Space, I went through every font and I picked the ones that I thought would look good with engraving. Those are the ones in this box at the top. So all of these are the font names in the font. So you can see what the font looks like as well as see the name. So that's eight fonts within Cricut Design Space. Now, some of those might be accessed, some of them might be paid, I did not check that. Under here are six fonts that came from the Creative Fabrica website. So I will link to all six of these 
in the description below this video. And then you can grab those if you wanted to use one of those for engraving. It really depends on which project I'm working on, the look I'm going for, which of these I would probably use. So each one of these, if I were to click the actual word, you can see that it's an engrave operation. And to do that, you would need the Maker 3 or the Maker chosen as your machine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and engrave these on some metal so you can actually see what each of these fonts looks like on a piece of metal. And then we'll come back here and use the font of our choice from these choices to make a project. So I took all of those fonts and I engraved them on a piece of metal so you could get an idea of what these looked like once you put them on metal. So this is a sheet of gold metal that is intended for engraving. I will link to it below in case you wanted to do some experiments or even a project with this metal sheet. So you can see that with these fonts, you can see them much better than if you had a font that was just a single line. And from this, I can pick my favorite fonts. So maybe I like, I really like the ones that are lines. I like the citation up here. I do like, like the BFC Pepperminty. And then I like the Ridge 5 and the Troix down here are probably my favorites. But all of these I might use on a project at one point or another. So a sheet like this that you can reference at any time is great to have. So now that I have my reference sheet and I know which font I want to use, let's put one of these fonts to use and actually make a project. The supplies you're going to need are as follows. So I'm going to actually engrave a Christmas ornament. And I'm going to use something out of this three pack or a couple of them. Brayer painter's tape or strong grip transfer tape. And I'm gonna show you a hack with the strong grip transfer tape. And also if you just have painter's tape, how to use that. You might want a scraper and a strong grip Cricut mat is required. And then I am also gonna use stamp enamel to fill in the engraving. It kind of makes it pop off. And they have this new pack that has different colors and I thought I would try like one or two of these, especially since the colors would look really great with a Christmas ornament. This is optional, but it does make the engraving stand off a little bit, especially when you're using like a silver, like I am here. You also need the Cricut Maker or the Maker 3 and your engraving tip with the quick swap housing. So this tip allows you to engrave onto metal and it is only available for the Maker or the Maker 3. I do have another video on the tool I use in my Explore Air 2 and that could work on an Explore Air 2 or an Explore 3 and I'll link the video for that tool in the description below. And you can use these same steps for that machine. Engraving does not currently work with the Cricut Joy. So I chose the font Citation. Now this is a Cricut font. I chose it for my project. And I went ahead and typed the Holdens 2022. I changed it to an engrave line. And then I resized it to fit the ornament that I'm using. If you had more than one object, you wouldn't want to attach them together. This is one piece. It's all text. So I can go ahead and click Make It. On this screen, you will want to locate the engraving exactly where your blank is located on the mat. So let's take a look at how to add the blank to the mat first. I'm going to use the transfer tape pack for this project, but I'm going to talk a little bit how you would use just painter's tape if you wanted to. So this is a strong grip transfer tape. And what I'm going to do is stick it down on the mat. So I know I want this blank located up in this upper left-hand corner. So I'm going to put it in that approximate area. Then I'm gonna smooth it out. And then you just wanna peel back just the liner and you wanna leave the transfer tape on the mat. Then we're gonna take this and locate it where we want it. So I want it on the two and the two. So the two line and the two line and the center both ways. And once I have it exactly where I want it, I'm gonna take my brayer and bray over the top. Now this usually holds my blanks really well and works great for smaller blanks. That way I don't have to have tape. This is a larger blank, so technically I would not need to use the strong grip transfer tape. I could put this directly on the mat and then I could add some tape to hold the blank in place. So it's basically either or. You can use the tape or the strong grip transfer tape. I'm just using both to illustrate how that would work. If I'm using the tape, I generally do it on four sides. If at all possible, it may not always be possible with some blanks and some designs. So now you have a couple of different options depending on what you have at home and the method that you wanna use for your blank. Now that the blank is on the mat, we can move this around to where the blank is. So we located our blank at the two and two mark. So we'll go ahead and move this and first of all, it's easy for me to find the center up and down with the name. And then 
You can zoom in here if you want to get a closer look. And I believe that the center looks like it's the center of that H. So that looks pretty much centered on that line to me. So you can move this anywhere on the mat, anywhere that your blank is located. So now that it's located on the mat, we're gonna click continue. Now we can connect our machine, add our engraving tip and start engraving. So let's head to the maker. So I have my engraving tool in my machine. I have the star wheels moved all the way over to the right and I picked aluminum sheets as my material. Now I'm gonna load my mat. And once that loads, we'll press the go button to engrave. So now the ornament's been engraved, we'll go ahead and remove the mat. And let's take a look at this engraving. Here's that engraving still on the mat and you can see just how great that font looks. So now we need to remove this from the mat. So I do recommend getting some of the fibers off of your engraving so it'll make little metal flecks. And I just like to use whatever I use to hold down the ornament to pick those up. And you can rub your hand across, you might feel a rough texture. So go ahead and pick some more of those little pieces up and you'll probably even see them stuck to your tape. You can just do this several times until everything feels pretty good. It might still feel rough to the touch, but it should not feel sharp or anything like that. The back of this ornament did have a protective film on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that at this time. If whatever you're using has a protective film on the front, you would need to remove that before engraving. And now let's try this stamp enamel. So I'm gonna try it in red and add a red ribbon to the top of the ornament because I think that would be really fun and it'll match my tree. So I'm just gonna open this. It does not take very much at all. So we'll just add a little bit. Then I'm just gonna kind of spread this out over the engraving. And you can even put it how this one had engraving already on the sides. We can put it in that as well. So I'll just add some more and spread it into those grooves as well. And this seriously takes 30 seconds maybe. Just kind of let it get in there and then just wipe it right back off. It should just fill those lines in with the stamp enamel. Then I'm just gonna put this on a paper towel and use a paper towel to wipe away all the excess enamel. And it should at this point be down inside all of those engraved lines and you just need to wipe away all the excess. Hopefully you can see that red down in the engraving at this point and it just helps it pop off of the blank. Then I just added a ribbon and this one's ready for the tree. So now you saw how you can apply the fonts that we found to a fun engraving project. Now I chose a Christmas ornament for my project, however, there are so many things you can engrave. So I'm gonna drop tons of links in the description below this video. If you're on computer, scroll down and click show more. If you're on mobile, swipe up on the video or click the arrow to expand the description. Then you'll find links for other engraving videos, all the supplies I used for the project that I engraved today, along with the piece of metal that I engraved for my sample piece. If you wanna make a sample piece all your own, or you just love this gold metal piece, either way, I'll have a link on where to find those. And now that you know how to find these fonts, you're gonna to wanna to do all the engraving. So be sure to pick up the engraving tip for the Maker or the Maker 3, or there is another brand, not Cricut brand, of engraving tool that will fit the Explorer 2 or the Explore 3. You can try that one as well. Remember that using tools that aren't Cricut does void your warranty, so use that with caution. My Explorer 2 is older, so I add the engraving tool to that machine. So hopefully that helps you find engraving fonts that will work on your Cricut machine. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you liked this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.